Hi everyone, I hope you're all having a great week. This week I'm working on a super simple watercolor project. Using just a few colors and some masking fluid, I'm going to create a snow-covered pine tree. Masking fluid is a great product to use when you want to leave white areas in your painting. Working with masking fluid, I always use a brush that I've dedicated specifically to this process. Masking fluid dries relatively quickly on the brush while working and it makes it very difficult to clean the brush afterwards. Here I'm using the masking fluid to cover all of the areas where snow would lay on the branches of my tree. Before I can move on to painting, this layer will have to dry completely. Depending on how thick the masking fluid was applied, it can take anywhere from 15 minutes to an hour to dry. Once the masking fluid is completely dry, I start to work on my background first. I apply a light wash of blue to most of the upper portion of the paper, and when I get close to the bottom of the tree, I start to layer in a, a darker shade of that same blue. This will create the illusion of a shade being cast under the tree. Here I'm using a clean wet brush to soften the line of the shade I created under my tree. I also use a clean damp brush to soften the lines I see in the sky. Once I'm satisfied with how I've evened out my sky, I will let this layer dry before moving on to the next step of my process. Now it's time to add some color to my tree, and to do this I'll use a flat brush. To paint my tree, I'll work with three different values of green working from lightest to darkest. For this first layer of color, I'm making sure to add lots of water to my paint to make it more diluted and light. Since this overhead camera angle makes it difficult for you to see what I'm doing on my painting, I thought it would be good for me to show you on a different um, piece of paper how I'm holding my brush and how I'm using it to simply dab the very tip of the brush down on the paper. I repeat this process moving up and down the whole length of the tree and I make sure not to cover the entire area of the tree because I want to have room for more color at a later point and also a little bit of light coming through some of those branches. Once I'm done with this layer of color, I'll let it completely dry before moving on to the next. The second layer of color on my tree will be a darker green, so I'm creating this green by adding some blue to my previous shade of green. Then I start applying my color using the very same process I used for the first layer. Again, here's an example of how I'm holding and using my brush using a different camera angle. As I continue to dab the paint up and down my tree, I roll the brush between my fingers to change the angle of my strokes. And once I'm done with this layer, of course it's time to let it dry. For the third and last layer of color on my tree, I mix my darkest value of green. And then it's time to start dabbing on the color again. As I'm going along, I'm making sure to apply my color in a way that doesn't completely cover the previous layers. And once this is done, I'll let this final layer dry. Before moving on to the final step of my process, it's time to remove my masking fluid. The easiest and cleanest way to do this is to use an eraser. Once I had removed all of the masking fluid, I decided that the snow was a little too bright in most areas, so I'm going to be applying a light wash of blue to certain areas just to create a little bit more dimension and depth to the tree. This will make the snow appear less flat and um, not quite as bright on top of my tree. Once this final step is complete, I'm satisfied that my tree is done. Please don't hesitate to ask questions or post comments in the section below. Thank you again for joining me on this journey. I hope you have a wonderful week and happy creating!